They call it the MSI Summit E16 Flip, and this laptop is really something special. It's one of the first Intel laptops that I've ever reviewed and that I know of that comes not only with a mobile processor, the i7-1195 G7, but also a dedicated GPU. Up until this point, we've only seen laptops with dedicated GPUs inside of H-series processors, so like the i7-12800H or the i9-12900H. So laptops with a high TDP, meaning they get very hot, they have a lot of power draw, and they produce heat and fan noise. Those are the laptops that have come with dedicated GPUs. However, the laptops that are usually thin, light, quiet, have good battery life, have not come with dedicated GPUs, and it's time for a change. And that is why I'm excited about this laptop. Now, if you want to know my first impressions, everything that comes in the box, and just my overall thoughts on the build quality, definitely check out the unboxing. I'll link that up at the end of this video. For now, we're going to cover some questions that y'all had in the comment section of that video and get to all of the things that I was unable to cover in the full unboxing, which would be like benchmarks, color gamut ranges, webcam tests, and the like. So let's jump right into it and let's check out the color gamut range of this screen. And this is something that I have been impressed by. It has almost 100% across the board. However, the Adobe RGB is 91% great screen brightness, a low Delta E, so they've put a great quality screen on this laptop. And of course, it's a 16 by 10 aspect ratio at a 16 inch screen, which is becoming quickly my new favorite. So this laptop is a two in one laptop. Uh, and it does come with a the MSI pen. I'm not gonna cover all the, de the details on the two-in-one. If you want me to make a full video about that, definitely comment below. If I get enough interest, I'll make a full video about the touch screen and the two-in-one capabilities of this laptop. But just so you know, it comes with the pen and of course you have the two-in-one functionality of the flip, AKA the E16 flip. Now, in regards to the webcam, here's a quick sample for you. Here is the webcam on the Summit E16. Definitely grainy, but the color is good. It's very accurate upon you know what my color complexion actually looks like. And I was able to test the speakers as well. So here's a quick sample of the audio coming out of the speakers. Now this keyboard was also something unique that really stood out to me during the unboxing. They've given us a numpad, but it's a small numpad, which allows for the laptop to have this 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. If they gave us the full size keys on the numpad, it would have extended the laptop probably about a half an inch, which would have given us that extra half an inch wide and thrown off the 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So I love how they've done this small numpad on the keyboard deck in order to give us that nice tall screen that I have become very fond of throughout the past year. Now, keep in mind, this keyboard is quiet. However, I'm not loving the small trackpad. I've heard rumors that MSI is going to be dropping a larger trackpad on some of their newer models. And when that happens, we'll be getting the laptop in the studio and checking it out. But I would say one of my biggest complaints of this laptop, which I actually do enjoy quite a lot. We'll talk about that more in the benchmarks, why I think this is such a standout laptop. However, this small trackpad really gives me a little frustration if I'm going to be totally honest. Now, in regards to typing on the keyboard and using the trackpad, here's a quick audio sample for you. In regards to the ports, we have a full-size HDMI port on the left side of the chassis, two USB type C's, a manual cutoff switch for the webcam, and on the right side, we have two USB type A's, a micro SD card slot, which I wish was a full-size SD card, just saying, and then we have our headphone jack. Now, something I like to take a look at here is how thin and light this laptop is. It has a dedicated GPU, and it still has a nice, thin chassis and it does not weigh too much, especially for a 16 inch laptop. I recently reviewed the MSI Creator Z16 and it was thin, but it was a little on the heavy side. So I like that this laptop is a little bit lighter than that laptop. Now, one area of concern that definitely popped up in the comment section was this vent on the top of the keyboard deck. Everybody was saying they were concerned that that's gonna blow hot air onto the screen. And to be honest, yes, it does blow air onto the screen, but because of the thermal temperatures, which were actually quite excellent on this laptop, due to the mobile processor, the air blowing onto the screen was not in the 
85 to 96 degrees Celsius, like we see in the H series processors with something like the Asus Zephyrus M16, where it's blowing very hot air onto the screen. This laptop is blowing about 70 degrees Celsius onto the screen. So the difference in heat from the bottom of the screen to the top of the screen is about five to seven degrees Celsius. Nothing drastic. However, if it is a concern to you, I did want to note that yes, it is blowing hot air onto the screen. And maybe in the future, we'll see better thermal solutions for this. Now, while we're talking about the thermal we're going to pull up the thermal results, fan noise, and export time for 4K so you can see those results. And it was quite impressive to see a mobile processor with a dedicated GPU exporting around the 345 to 4 minute mark with a quiet fan noise and cool thermals. I'm very excited about this laptop for that reason alone that we have never seen a laptop up until this point that not only is cool and quiet, but also still holds great performance inside of Premiere Pro while 4K video editing. So this is a really unique and special package. It's not the beast of beasts in regards to 4K video editing laptops, but what it provides you with is a quiet laptop with cool thermals and still great performance. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability of the MSI Summit E16, you can head down in the description below and click that link. Now, one area that I wasn't able to test during the unboxing, it was of course the battery life. And this is one area I wish was better and I believe the reason that this is not as good as it could be is because there's not a MUX switch available on this laptop. Basically what a MUX switch does is it allows you to turn off the dedicated GPU and only utilize the CPU for your tasks. So let's say that you are watch streaming videos or you're just doing productivity tasks and you don't need all the performance of that GPU. A MUX switch would allow you to turn off the GPU and just cruise on the mobile processor. This would have substantially improved the battery life. Now the battery life tests that I run are streaming a video on YouTube, doing the Passmark productivity benchmark inside of the Passmark software, as well as editing 4K video on loop until the battery goes dead in Premiere Pro and running the Photoshop Puget Systems benchmark on repeat until the battery goes dead. And that's how we got the results. All right, as we're jumping into the benchmarks, let's go ahead and refresh ourselves on what we have in front of us. This is the i7 1195G7, the RTX 3050 dedicated GPU, 16 gigs of RAM. And this one actually has a two terabyte SSD. Now keep in mind as we're rolling into the benchmarks that if you want to upgrade this laptop, you are unable to. It does not have an upgrade path. So make sure you purchase this laptop with the exact RAM configuration that you want to have, because once you purchase it, you're locked into that RAM configuration of, for instance, 16 gigs. Kicking things off in the benchmarks, let's jump into Cinebench R23. And for the single core performance, it keeps up with every laptop I've had on my channel, even something like the Apple MacBook Pro M1 Pro or M1 Max. It's scoring a 1506 compared to the 1534 from those newer laptops. So single core performance is great. Where we see some dip down is going to be in the multi-core performance because we only have four cores and eight threads. This is an area I feel Intel is still lacking in with their mobile CPUs. I wish they would give us eight and 16 cores, so basically doubling that, and we would see fantastic performance out of these laptops. So hopefully in the next iteration, they, they up it and we get some things. I've seen some 12th gen coming out, uh, especially with the mobile processors, and I've seen some with eight and 16. I can't wait to get my hands on those to see how well they perform. Now, moving on to the Geekbench, single core and multi-core, we're seeing the same thing, good scores in Geekbench single core, uh, but then lower scores in the multi-core. Now, as we move on to 3D modeling, this is a laptop that will do 3D modeling because of the dedicated GPU, but it is not a 3D modeling beast by any stretch of the imagination. It's something that'll get you by if you're occasionally doing it, or if you're a student trying to, you know, just getting into the industry, needing a laptop for more than just 3D modeling, it will be suitable. However, it will not be incredible. So just keep that in mind as we're clicking through Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, PTC Creo and SolidWorks, you can see it's all at, you know, kind of the lower end of the chart. Now, moving on to After Effects, this is an area that I was really excited about because with the dedicated GPU, you give yourself about a 100 to 200 point boost above other mobile processor laptops because of the dedicated GPU. It just allows the After Effects program to run more smoothly on some of those more complex processes that happen inside of After Effects. Now, moving forward to 4K video editing, the export times are good for 4K. Uh, it took quite a while for both the 6K Red and the 6K B-RAW, as you can see. But what I love about the 4K export is it's cool and quiet. And so it just doesn't, you don't have this really loud, noisy machine. It's a very pleasant working experience. Now, if you're a DaVinci Resolve user, I would not recommend this laptop for DaVinci Resolve 
Intel mobile processors and DaVinci Resolve just really don't get along well. They have slow export times. The playback is good, but those export times are just so long. I'd recommend you know the Apple products with the new Apple M1 chips. I recommend the Ryzen. Um, and even with the dedicated GPU inside of this laptop, it's just not quite enough to give us those nice quick export times out of DaVinci Resolve. So I would, I would not do it if you're a DaVinci Resolve user. Now, moving on to the Photoshop benchmark, I really like how this laptop performed inside of Photoshop, scoring an 800 in the Puget Systems benchmark. And as you can see, there's another i7 1195G7, and that's scoring around a 674. So you get about 150 point uh, improvement there. So there's certain tasks inside of Photoshop that do benefit from a GPU. Now, they also benefit from an integrated GPU inside of something like an i7 1195G7. So when you add the dedicated GPU, those tasks become even more efficient. I've actually made a full video about that, integrated versus dedicated GPU for creators, and I'll link that up at the end of this video if you're curious to check that out. We'd love to know your feedback, questions, and comments on this laptop. Otherwise, links if you're ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.